Okay, welcome to the 31st lecture in mechanics of materials. We were looking in the last class on inflation of analyst cylinder. Basically, we used it as an example of how to formulate a boundary problem systematically using theory of elasticity. That is, we assume a displacement field. From the displacement field, we computed what is the strain. From the strain, we computed the stress using the three dimensional constellation, and then we found the unknown component, the displacement field from the equilibrium equation that is divergence of sigma equal to 0 assuming there is negligible body forces and the body is in static equilibrium. We the equilibrium equation is boiled down to requiring divergence of sigma to be equal to 0 ok. Using that we found that the displacement field u of r has to be given by c 1 r by 2 plus c 2 by r and then we found the constant c 1 and c 2 such that the boundary conditions for the given problem are satisfied. In particular in this problem we had pressure applied at the inner surface and no pressure applied at the outer surface. So, that was sigma rr at ri the inner surface must be equal to minus p i the applied pressure at the inner surface and sigma rr at r naught must be equal to 0 the applied pressure at the outer surface. From that condition we found what c 1 and c 2 are ok and then we estimated the stresses again going back to computing the strain and from the strain plugging it in the constellation to compute the stresses as given here ok. And we rationalize that the predominant stress that is produced in this boundary value problem is the OOP stress or sigma theta theta stress which is approximately 10 to 20 times more than the radial stress ok. Radial stress is sigma rr and it has a variation as shown here it varies from minus pi at the inner surface to 0 at the outer surface the boundary condition that was specified and whereas sigma theta theta is a tensile stress which varies from a maximum value of the inner surface to a minimum value of the outer surface which is roughly 2 times pi r i square by r naught square minus r i square ok. And then we can go back and compute what the strains are also from the expression that sigma epsilon r r is dou r by dou r which is c 1 by 2 minus c 2 by r square and from the fact that uh, uh, epsilon theta theta is nothing but u r by r that is c 1 by 2 plus c 2 by r square ok. From these expressions you can compute the strains also because you know what u of r is ok. Now, we will proceed further and see what happens when the boundary condition changes and what are the various variations in this problem that we can study ok. The first thing is say I pressurize it both from inside and outside I am not going to solve this entire problem but just indicate how to go about solving this problem ok is pressurized from outside by a pressure P E say. Now, uh, this pressure is again opposite to the outward drawn normal to that surface. So, this is the negative pressure. So, the boundary conditions now will be sigma r r at r equal to r i is equal to minus P i same as what we saw in the last class last lecture and sigma r r at r equal to r naught instead of being 0 now is going to be minus p external ok the externally applied pressure negative because it is opposite to the direction of the outward drawn normal. The stresses which are parallel to the outward drawn normal are always positive stresses which are opposite the force which are acting opposite to the outward drawn normal are negative stresses ok. So, you got these two expressions now. So, your evaluation of the constant c 1 and c 2 will be different for this case it will involve p i and p e and you can go about doing the same thing plug it into the constellation find the strain plug it into the constellation and find the stresses ok. And now, let us say instead of uh, cylinder which is unless cylinder I have a solid cylinder pressurized from outside then what will happen say I have a solid cylinder pressurized from outside. this outward acting pressure would be normal to the surface ok. So, this P e is acting in a 
solid cylinder with the x and y oriented like that. Now, what are the boundary conditions you have? You have only presumably one boundary condition, right? You have sigma r r at r equal to r naught to be given by minus p e. Okay. What is the other boundary condition that you will use? The other boundary condition comes from the fact that the displacement field should be bounded in the domain of the problem. Okay. You we got u of r of r to be c 1 r by 2 plus c 2 by r. Okay. As r tends to 0 you find that c 2 by r goes to infinity which means the center of the cylinder has a infinite displacement if this were to be the displacement field which is not allowable. Okay. And then you set c t c 2 to be 0, c 2 is 0 for a solid cylinder. Since displacement has to be has to be finite in the domain of the problem. Problem. Okay. So, that is the second boundary condition that you have. Now, you have only one constant which you can find from the condition that sigma r r at r naught is minus p e. Okay. Now, I can have another boundary condition wherein the inner surface can be held fixed. Say I have a rigid body, a rigid steel rod put into a rubber pipe and I am pressurizing this pipe from outside. And I am pressurizing this pipe from an outside pressure say. From outside pressure P e, what is the boundary condition now? Still let me have my axis as x and y here. Still my boundary conditions would be sigma r r at r equal to r naught the outer surface is minus p e where this is r naught and this is r i. Now, what is the second boundary condition that you will have? The second boundary condition is since the inner surface is resting against a rigid body this surface defined by r equal to this inner surface will not get radially displaced since it is resting against a rigid body. Okay. So, the boundary condition would be u of r at r equal to r i has to be equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the second boundary condition that we will use to solve this problem. Okay. Now, I can after setting this to be 0 and using this boundary condition I can look at the problem wherein I can look at r naught by r i tending to infinity meaning I have a infinite domain the center of which is a rigid body. Okay. So, in that case if I apply an EQ by actual pressure that is the idealization that you get from solving this problem in the limit r naught by r i tending to infinity. Okay. So, this will be this boundary conditions plus this condition gives us the solution for infinite domain. with a rigid inclusion subjected to equal biaxial state of stress. Okay. Similarly, I can have a case wherein the external pressure alone similarly I can have the case of an external pressure alone applied in this domain P e an external pressure alone applied in this domain wherein now the boundary conditions is obvious should be sigma r r at r equal to 
R i has to be equal to 0 and sigma R r at r equal to R naught would be minus P e and for this boundary condition plus the limit R naught by R i tending to infinity you will have an infinite domain with a circular hole in, in the middle subjected to an equibacular state of stress okay. This solution will correspond to an infinite domain with a circular void subjected to equal biaxial state of stress. Okay. This infinite domain means basically you have some domain like this which is extending towards infinity both in x and y direction and you have a void, a small void in other words located at the center of the coordinate system. Okay. So, this as about shape of the domain means it is infinite it is extending to a large area okay, and you are subjecting it to equibiaxial pressure P e on all directions. Since the domain is infinite, the P e will become normal to the surface, it is always normal to the surface, so it will become a equibiaxial state of stress. Okay. So, basically, it is not now in all this, we add the basic displacement field as u is a function of u of r e r, but this also can change, I can superpose axial deformations which will be plus epsilon z times z e z which is the actual expansion or contraction the actual displacement is given by epsilon z times z. Okay. I can superpose the torsional uh, displacement which in this case would be given by omega z e theta okay. omega z e theta which I can superpose in this also which will be the angular displacement and still for this displacement field also u of r by r would be c 1 r by 2 plus c 2 by r because these displacement are orthogonal to the radial displacement and the superposition is allowed which means this is a small deformation linear constellation that we are studying and so you can superpose solutions. So, you can study solutions which have only this component or which has only this component or one which has only the torsional uh, displacement component okay, which has the torsional displacement component or I can study only this torsional rotation component. Okay. In each of these cases you have to re-derive from the first principles find the strain, use the constellation to find the stress, use the equilibrium equations to find the unknown components of the displacement field and then you go back plug that in into the strain field and find the stress again and that will be your solution for the problem. Okay.